tu esi bonus, Domine. Et miziet. Did you hear someone scream? Perhaps it was just a ghost. What do you think, Father? Why, uh, of course not. A bird, more likely than not. You know, they say there's some sort of huge bird in this area. It has even been known to attack people. Yes, well, God be with you, then. I say that. Good evening, my good man. Evening, sir. I must get up to the village. Is there any transportation to take me there? Not at this hour. Not at what hour? Yeah. 
Why, it's just past six o'clock. Yes, sir, and getting on to nightfall. Surely, then, there is someone who will give me a ride. You don't understand, sir. There are some strange things happening here after dark. If you like, sir, I could offer you a place to sleep. There's no one around here that will take that road at night. I see. How long will it take to walk there? Not far, about a mile. I wouldn't advise you to walk there, sir. Seeing as it's the cemetery road you'd have to take. <laughs> You're being a little dramatic, aren't you? I have no fear of the dead. And that's for the living. You can see I'm well prepared. Tomorrow, would you please send my bags? Where will you be, sir? At the residence of the Mihailis. But the Count, uh, he's dead, sir. Yes, I know. He was my uncle. May God watch over his soul. And yours too. Isn't there anyone in this village at all? Open up! Open up! There's a woman hanging from a tree in the cemetery! Open up in there! Hey! Don't go! What's the matter with you? For the love of God, help me! What the hell is the matter with you crazy people? Hey! 
Me, you in the house, open the door. In the name of God, someone open the door. What do you want? Thank God. I found a woman hanging from a tree in the cemetery. Better make your way to the police, it's their worry. But I don't know where the hell the police station is. Get her alone. Are you deranged, man? Or didn't you understand what I just told you? Get away from here. Ivan! Let him in. This girl. This girl here in the portrait, who is she? My stepdaughter. Why, do you know her? She's dead. I just discovered her body. This is Inspector Durbin. He's going to lend us his help to try and clear this whole thing up. <laughs> it would seem we have little confidence in our ability to handle the matter ourselves. <laughs> you have a fine sense of humor, Mr. Mayor, a fine sense of humor. When did you decide to come here to Skopje, Mr. Chekhov? Immediately I received the telegram that the solicitor sent. That'd be two days ago. On opening Count Mihaly's last will and testament, I discovered that young Mr. Chekhov is also one of the Count's heirs. Do you have any idea what the will is about? No, none at all. I, um, I really saw my uncle. Yes, I've been told. From the legal point of view, is the will valid? Valid? Of course. And Count Mihaly's widow was married legally, I imagine. Is that correct? I am not standing for this, I assure you. I'm so sorry, madam. I certainly didn't mean to be rude to you. The Count's will is this. I hereby bequeath all my estate to Mary, my one and only daughter. And as for the Countess, she may inherit only what the law requires. <sighs> what the law requires? That's ridiculous. What did he think I could do with four acres of rotten land? He must have been out of his mind to think I would finish my life like that. Where do you think you're going to? The Countess Mihaly could need me. Send Doris after the Countess Mihaly. I was under the impression it was her duty anyway. Do you mind? You have no right to detain me! You really think not? May I remind you that we're here to investigate a murder? Murder, you say? But she took her life by her own hand. Oh, yes? Perhaps you'd tell me how she went about it. Me? How should I know? Why, it's obvious. First she tied a noose round her neck, then she climbed into a nearby tree, Attached the rope to a branch, and then down she went. Simple, huh? Funnily enough, however awkward it may seem, one must realize that that's what she might have done. To tell you the truth, I might have been led to accept this theory if only there weren't other evidence to make us think differently. For example, we found traces under the tree which strongly indicate the girl's body had been dragged there, which leads to the conclusion that she did not arrive alone. And then there's the fact that close to the tree, we found a pistol which had been fired recently, and we found the deceased's fingerprints on it. If she'd wanted to commit suicide, why then didn't she shoot herself? So you think she was first murdered and then hanged to put us off the track? Exactly. But this is absurd. Why? If you were the one who'd strangled the lady, how would you go about getting rid of the finger marks? One way is to tie a piece of rope around her neck. There's your motive, sir. I gave her a pill. She'll be all right in the morning. Mr. Dombrovsky, according to the Count's will, what exactly was left to young Mr. Chekhov? Two hundred annually. And the guardianship of the young lady. But uh, she's already deceased. And with the lady's death, what will be the advantage to young Chekhov? What are you trying to say, Inspector? You're virtually accusing me. There's no one being accused. Dombrovsky, continue. By the law. The estate will pass on to 
Serge Chekhov. Igor, come. I want you here. Igor, hurry. Don't make me. You reached a conclusion. A most natural death. What did you say? I'm afraid a heart attack was the cause. She was already dead. When she was hanged... Well, I suppose that does away with my murder theory. Scientifically, yes. But... Do you mean there's still some doubt? Uh, I'm not quite sure of this, you understand, but I think that Mary was scared to death. But that's my personal opinion. I'm of the same opinion. It was a terrible thing to see the fear in her eyes. I wonder what sort of monster she must have met.
please accept my condolences. You don't trust that grave digger. It's a strange sort. Could be dangerous too, I should think. Do you really think we need to search his house? Yes, I certainly do. Well, here we are. That's it down there. You go around there. I'll go this way. Be careful. a photographer. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's in that cupboard. Magnesium. Oh, so I see. Hmm. By God, ladies' underwear. The scoundrel. Hmm. Ah. Inspector, look here. <clears throat> Photos, huh? Oh. Would you dare? This business has turned my stomach. Igor is a grave robber. A monster who's a danger to society. I don't think he's killed anybody, but it's my intention to arrest him and interrogate the man in full. Well, if he's still in the village, he won't be hard to find. You can be certain that everyone will be on the lookout for him. Well, just to be on the safe side, here's a word of advice for you. I suggest that none of you go out at night. And in the case that you do, make sure that you're always carrying a weapon. What is it? What is it? What's going on? I'm sure it was his face. Yes. Come on. <laughs>
And you go that way. We'll surround him. He won't get away. He must be here somewhere. Tomb of me, highly. He couldn't have disappeared into thin air. I'm sure there must be a hidden entrance. Tomorrow, I'll organize a thorough inspection of the whole cemetery. don't mind, I'll be retiring now. We've all had a trying day. Here, this will help you rest. Oh, thank you. I do feel a little bit nervous, what with all the commotion. Yes, let's hope that tomorrow will be a little less eventful. Oh, uh, you'll excuse my asking, Mr. Chekhov, but what exactly will be my position now? We'll talk about it tomorrow. I don't know if the sedative you gave me is taking effect already, but I feel awfully sleepy all of a sudden. <laughs> Which reminds me, I don't know where I'm to sleep. <laughs> I'll show you where your room is. Thank you. Well, good night, Doctor. Did you find Igor? No. We managed to follow him as far as the cemetery, and oh. then he just vanished. I won't feel safe until he's been found. Thank you. You may go now, Doris. Uh. Your room is ready for you, sir. Everything has been seen to. Thank you. If you need anything else, you can ring the bell beside your bed. Thank you. You may go now. Wouldn't you like me to accompany you? As usual, madam. The Countess said you could go, Ivan, so would you please do so? We would like to be alone. Sir, I really think the Countess should be by herself. It's been an exhausting day, hasn't it, madam? Listen here, Ivan. I'm ordering you to go, do you understand? Ordering, sir. Yes, ordering. <coughs> <laughs> Leave Ivan, or do I have to put a bullet into your leg? You'll pay dearly for this, Chekhov! 
I'm the master in this house! What happened? Nothing serious. I'm afraid we'll just have to start looking for a new butler. Good night. Mr. Chekhov? Hmm? I just wanted to thank you. I find ill-mannered servants most disagreeable. Someday when the two of us feel like it, we must talk it over. I know you're a man of the world, so you'll understand, won't you? This is such a small village. May I offer you a drink or something? A nightcap would do you good. Would you mind if we left it till tomorrow? I'm too tired to be very good company. You see, it wouldn't do if I fell asleep, would it? Miss Mary, dead, murdered, and they killed the Count Mahaili. They murdered us all. The dead. The dead. <laughs> You'd better tell the police how much you know. No, the police. No, I won't do it. I won't do that. They want Igor in prison. I won't do it. Never. No. is here. Oh, my God. Oh. But there's no one here at all. It was Igor. He was here and he hit me on the head. But there's nobody here but you. It's just your imagination. Well, the blood seems real. Oh. Let me see. Oh, I must have done it when I pushed the door against the candelabra. Why don't we go into my room and I'll try to make amends? I suppose... Your offer of a drink is still open. <laughs> Doesn't it seem a little odd to you? My room, I mean. Have you any experience in black magic? Drink this. You'll feel much better in a little while. Now I want you to lie on your stomach, close to the light. <coughs> Do 
do you believe in the powers of the occult? Well, you know, I've known witches and magicians the way from Africa to Tibet. I've never really believed in any of their so-called magic. I'll convince you. That's something to look forward to, isn't it? They're certainly much more attractive than the others. I... What the devil is that magic potion you're using? <laughs> no magic. I'm just using a little alcohol with a caustic solution, which I used to prepare for your <clears throat> uncle when he cut himself <sighs> shaving. <clears throat> You don't know how good I feel. Why is that? Because you're so much a woman. Are you sure it's not the wine? I think you're what is beautiful. So's yours. You should be resting. You should sleep. Nadia? It's Doris, sir. Doris? Oh, let me uh, explain. Uh, I... You needn't bother about explaining to me. I just came in to wake you up, madam. I'm sorry, I was still asleep. She came in so suddenly, there was nothing I could do. I, I shouldn't worry about it. You know, Doris isn't shocked a bit at what happens around here, and we all have something to hide in our past. Isn't that so? There's tea and toast downstairs. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. What is it, Doris? Nothing. Well, well, my dear. If looks could kill, I'd certainly make a point of not getting in your way this morning. Papa, let's go away. What is it? What's wrong, Doris? Tell me. It's that horrible woman. I can't stand her any longer. Doris? What? What are you saying? That's no way for a young lady to talk. Besides, they might hear you. Listen, Papa. I don't care. I came to work in this godforsaken place only because of what the Count did for you. But now all I want to do is to go back to the city. I know that Serge dismissed the butler, but he'll soon find other servants. You'll not be expected to run this place all by yourself. It'll be all right now, don't worry. We'll have to leave. I know we will. He's sure to sell this place. What makes you think that? He... He spent the night in a room. What? I'm almost certain that's what he's going to do. To please Nadia. Sell the place just like she always intended. And then go away. Sell the place. Yes, my dear, I'm afraid you may be right. But what about your experiments? Then there's your laboratory. What will you do? I'll begin again somewhere else. The inheritance is theirs. And to be truthful, I do the same. Nadia's much too much of a woman to be cooped up in this place. Thank you, Doctor. I always knew you were a gentleman. Now, Doris, my tea, if you please. Girl, can't you be more careful? You've scolded me. I'm so sorry, madam. Sorry. You certainly will be sorry. At least I shan't have to put up with you much longer. Psst. Psst. This is my laboratory. 
Please excuse me for keeping you from your breakfast, but I felt that you would prefer to talk in here about a rather delicate matter. Uh, Nadia and my daughter seem to be at crossed swords. I think, you know, we would have found more tension at the table than here in this apparatus. What are you going to do now with this house and laboratory? It's taken many years to put this equipment together, piece by piece. What exactly is your position here? We were partners, the Count and I. He bought this equipment. All the pieces you see here. And for my part, I let him put his name alongside mine on many of my books. You can't be serious. Absolutely serious. How could you let my uncle share your prestige and good name? The proposition was my own. Your uncle was a vain man with a layman's passion for science, and I had no money to continue my research. Obviously, I'm interested to know your plans. Your decision will have a great bearing on my future. I'm sure that my uncle would never have wanted you to discontinue your work. Would it take much longer? There's no point in giving you a date. I'm working on a series of experiments. There's no precise aim, you see. I'm still experimenting with nebular electricity. It is liberated upon death of the body. There are some scientists who maintain that the nebulous is the spirit which leaves the body. Watch. The frog is dead. Just the same. Watch. But it's still living. Mm. Mm. The frog's moving because I placed it under a charge superior to what it had when alive. I wonder if this charge were applied to a person at the precise moment of death, I wonder how the human body would respond. Well, I'm afraid, as you've seen, these are not experiments where you can anticipate a very rapid conclusion. Yes, I see your point. Anyway, there's no need for you to worry. You may continue with your work, and you're free to use the laboratory as you like. I shall be eternally grateful. Oh, there's no need to thank me, either. We must talk more about this later. I think it's time for my breakfast. Oh, I've been looking for you. The doctor's been showing me his laboratory. I think we should let him stay on. But you're mad! You have no idea of what the expense is! My husband, sir, was a megalomaniac. He spent a fortune just to put his name on the bottom of a stupid book. He gave me hardly as much as a peasant woman might expect. And now you actually imagine that... Sorry, I forgot myself. You will forgive me. Well, now. I don't suppose that you really needed to know all that. I want to know everything. Was he... Methodical. Who? Your... my uncle. Very, unfortunately. Then I take it we ought to be able to find the bills for all that equipment. I imagine so, yes. He always did his accounting in his room upstairs. I might add that during the last couple of years we hadn't been sleeping together. Well, I'll go and have a look in his room, shall I? You know... I'll be interested to find out exactly what he left me. For all I know, I might have inherited a mountain of debts, perish the thought. <laughs> Heaven's name, are you doing here? 
Will you please explain? I came to talk to you. I must take care that evil woman isn't spying. Nadia... Nadia's persuaded you to sell the house, hasn't she? In a way, I suppose. I want things to stay the same as they are. Oh, why is that? For my father. Poor Papa. You have no idea how he feels. You must allow his work to go on. And if I did allow him to continue, what would I gain from the situation? Hmm? I can offer you the same as she does. And I'm much younger. I suppose we could try. No supposing. Yes or no. But I don't like to buy without first examining the merchandise. Here. Yes or no? Yes. Imagine what fun we're going to have. My father will be able to carry on his work. Is that so? Of course he will. All right, take off your clothes. What are you saying? Didn't you offer me the same as her? Uh, yes. But I didn't think. All right, then. If you want, you can walk over to that door, and then when you've opened it, you can walk out. There's no point in going on. You're the most stupid girl I've ever known, Doris. I've been over this with your father this morning. I won't be taking the laboratory away from him. Thank you. Damn it, cover yourself before I begin to feel guilty over all this. Something strange about what happened to my uncle and poor Mary. Why was she murdered and hanged from that tree? Who would have done that? Have you any idea how my uncle died? A cerebral hemorrhage. He had a tumor on the brain. Yes, it all appears to be normal, but... Listen, Serge. The police have already gone through this. Why can't you accept their findings? Mary was murdered. But they said she died of heart failure. But what the devil was she doing in the cemetery on the night she died? Why don't you look at her diary? You mean she kept a diary? Why, yes. It might be the key to the whole mystery. Come on, it should be in her room. But this was Mary's room. Oh, drat, I have no more matches. Where's the window? It's over there, to the left. over this damn table. If the thing had fallen on my leg, it would have broken it. 
Are you hurt at all? A little. Do you think that a magic potion would cure me? What do you mean? <laughs> Nothing. That's it. This is the diary? Yes. But it's all written in a foreign language. It's Russian. Doris, can you translate it? Mm, I'll try. See if you can find anything about her father's death. That's funny. What's the matter? There's something added to this page. And it's signed Count Mahaili. What is it? Go ahead and read it. Uh, well, what is it? A letter. Uh, dearest daughter, I write to you in your diary, knowing that you are the only one who will read my words. You see, I am afraid because soon I expect to die. And I am now putting you, my daughter, in danger. By exposing at this moment a terrible and very perilous secret. Serge will take care of you. I was too late. I would like him uh, to be near you in case of danger. I know he'll be very good and kind to you. I'm sure we can trust him to protect you. Tell him I'm going to... Uh, sorry. We'll take my secret to the tomb with me. I hope he will understand your loving father. I will take my secret to the tomb. It's all so clear now. So that's why she went to the cemetery. My uncle had a document with him when he was buried. A document that must explain the reason for his fears. If I'm right, it must still be there. I don't see why a dead person should take documents to the tomb. May I point out... This is getting ridiculous. He wrote in that letter that he was living under constant fear of death. Don't you think that's a good enough reason for exhuming the Count's body? What did you say? Oh, that man ever got elected mayor. I'll never know. Here. Where are we going? To the cemetery. I'm afraid, Serge. Nevertheless, I must have your help if we're to find that document. Uh, I'm still afraid. All right, I'll go alone. But I shall have to find something to open the tomb with. There's a bar right there. Would that do? Good. Couldn't be better. I'll see you back at the house. <coughs> Oh, Miss Doris, how are you today? Well, thank you. Anything I can do for you? No, thank you. I just want to pray for the Count and for Mary. I was her best friend. Well, Miss, I shouldn't stay too long around here. Not with that crazy gravedigger running amok. Evil little bastard he is, no mistake. Yes, I'll take care, thank you. If you should need any assistance, you'll find another guard over there. I'm off now. You're very kind. No trouble.
Over here. Have you found anything? Nothing. Not even the body. <laughs> Have you come to any decision about what you're going to do with the house? Yes, I'm going to sell it as soon as possible. Well, when do you think you'll be leaving? Tomorrow would not be soon enough. But first, I intend to obtain permission to exhume the body of my uncle. And I would also like to find out why Mary was hanged when she was already dead. The best way to find out is ask Mary herself. How could we? Call the spirits. I'm sure we won't have any trouble bringing her here. We can hold a seance, summon her to appear, and then ask her what happened. Spiritualism. Are you sure you can do it? I have done it before. Well, I don't believe in this stupid nonsense. Good night. Nor do I. Wait just a moment. Our seance requires that there be at least three of us. No. Please, Doris. It's much too important, my dear. We'll go up to my room. The ambience is better there. <laughs> Without pressing on it. The palms of the hands should be flat, with the fingers well apart. Each hand should be touching the one next to it. Keep still. Don't move. The time is propitious. Are you there? Can you hear? Take every thought out of your head. You mustn't think earthly thoughts, but only of Mary. This night I give you your freedom to visit your friends. Those who love you await you here. Please listen, Mary. Please listen, Mary. Manifest. She's here. She's with us. She's struggling with something. You must clear your thoughts. You must concentrate. Oh, the spirit's resisting. Please, Mary. Manifest your spirit. Fight. Respond. I feel a presence. But it's not Mary. Spirit. Are you near? Mihail, is that you? It is good that you are with us. Speak to me. Speak to me. What's going on here? Oh, so Nadia's been killed. Oh, my God. It was my uncle who did it. What are you saying? And I have a very good idea where I can find him.
Igor? saw him as well. I know. Doris told me about it. And she was still suffering from the effects of an attack of hysteria, poor girl. How much credence do you think we can give to your story? Not the sort of tale you hear every day, is it? Why do you have to be so damn stubborn, Inspector? My uncle is alive. If you don't believe me, why don't you go and look in his tomb? Because it's empty, I tell you. That's exactly what we intend to do. And you, sir, will have to answer it's for your right. conduct. It's all right. You can come down now. Doctor, would you care to examine the body to see if the Count is really dead? But it, it's obvious he's dead. Please, Doctor. I'd like your opinion for the regional medical officer. But couldn't it be a case of catalepsy or a state of hypnosis or something? Surely there are cases where a person only seems to be dead. Out of the question. There are already the signs of decomposition. I'd rather you didn't leave the village, Chekhov. I have a few things I'd like to ask you. But are you wounded? Hmm? Wounded? No, Inspector. Then what's that blood? <gasps> to get him out. <laughs> Look at this. What in the world does that mean? Number 37. Maybe he wanted to leave us a clue as to who buried him alive. For your information, Inspector, he's been dead at least three hours. You'd better take the body over to your laboratory, Doctor. Tomorrow we'll have the regional medical officer perform an autopsy. Well, the lady was strangled to death, there's no doubt about that. Then what need is there to perform an autopsy on her? It's always a painful ordeal when the body of a personal friend is concerned. I'm sure you'll understand. Ah, yes. I agree with you. But the law's the law, and that's that. Put him over there. <laughs> My dear doctor, it's really deathly cold in your laboratory. Uh, no pun intended, of course. There's a system of refrigeration in here that keeps my specimens in good condition, thus enabling me to continue my research over long periods of time. <coughs> Heat greatly accelerates the decomposition of the body. Inspector, I believe you sent for me. Yes, I want to interrogate you formally. Come with me, Chekhov. Guard, I shall need your assistance to wash this body. <coughs> Unfortunately... Mr. Chekhov, it looks as if the situation is getting serious for you. I warn you, all the evidence is against you. Listen to me. Instead of imitating Sherlock Holmes, why don't you try and find that butler? He's the one who said he knew a certain strange happenings going on around this village. I mean to do just that, but meanwhile, I insist that you do not leave this house. Understood? You mean you're placing me under arrest? Put it like this. I just want to know where I can lay my hands on you.
Thank you. You must forgive me, Doctor, for the inconvenience this must be causing you. Oh, by the way, I'm sure I can trust you to see that nobody tampers with the bodies. Yes, of course, Inspector. I'll make certain that no one enters the laboratory. Indeed, I, I think I shall close it up. This tragedy weighs heavily on me. I understand. I'm very much obliged Inspector, to Inspector, this is my lawyer's telephone number. I suggest that you get in touch with him. I know my rights, and I shall volunteer no more information until he is present. I'll phone him first thing in the morning, Mr. Chekhov. Good evening. Good evening. I want you to know, I don't believe anything that the inspector said. Why is that? Oh, oh sir, it, it's all so horrible. Don't worry, Doris. Everything will turn out for the best. Doris! Go to bed. Good night. Sleep well. Mr. Chekhov, Doris has been brought up very simply. You shouldn't take advantage of her. I would like to tell you that when all this has passed, I shall ask her to marry me. Thank you. You don't understand, sir. There are some strange things happening here after dark. And they killed the Count Marie. They murdered someone. They did. I was preparing your dinner. You must eat something. What is it? Is there somebody else besides ourselves in this house? No, nobody else is here. Why? Someone has just walked up those stairs. It was Papa. That's impossible. It was a woman. And she was wearing your cape. My cape? But I just hung it up in here. <gasps> but I put it right there. It's gone. He is not here. I thought as much. What do you mean? It's a trick. I'm sure of it. A diabolical witch. But we saw her. She was dead. She was killed. I'm convinced now that it was a form of catalepsy that she tricked us with. Uh, that one? Is he... Is he alive too? He was?
Go to your room and lock yourself in. No, don't leave me alone. I must. No, I'm afraid. I must find her. She's the only one who can straighten this out. No. Don't forget, I'm being accused of murdering her. Take me with you, I'm afraid. Very well. But calm down, Doris. Come on, then. There, that must be a way out. Come on. Come on, Doris. Everything's all right. There's nothing to worry about. We can walk home from here quite easily. Hello! She with you? Yes, I left her hiding over there. You took our look for her. Go right, sir. You need restraining for your own good, uh. Mr. Chekhov. 
Miss Doris, where are you? It's off in the 80s. Struth. You look over there. Over where? Over there. There's not a sign of a secret passage, Inspector. The fireback's as solid as a rock. It has to be there, Inspector. You must knock the wall down if necessary. But I swear we went out that way and... The fire's put out, sir. But the two bodies are burnt to a crisp. And my daughter? There was no sign of her. Don't worry about it. Her not being found yet, Doctor, is not the worst news we could have. She could have tried to avoid the fire by running over towards the woods. Please tell your men to continue their search for her. Very well. You should never have taken her with you. But I swear to you, you know, I... You things are going from bad to worse for your concern, Mr. Chekhov. Your story about the walking dead will never stand up. Pity those bodies were completely destroyed by the fire. No chance of performing an autopsy. Tomorrow, you'll be coming with me to appear before the judge. Oh, don't try to escape. The guards have been ordered to shoot on sight, so it wouldn't be worth it. Admirable deduction. You did it! Yes. It was my name that Igor wrote. Quick, God! God! His will be another death that will be held against you. But I'm hanging up to the bed! They'll never believe it! I can either bring the guard's body up here or free you. The inspector has no idea that these bars are so easily unscrewed, my dear sir. You mean... You really would free me? Of course. Afterwards, you will commit suicide in desperation. No, I'm sorry to disappoint you. If you try to kill me, I promise I'll tear you apart. Me kill you? Oh, no. I'm going to leave that for my dead ones.
Ego is my latest reanimation. Impossible! How have you done this? I have discovered that by inserting a small capsule into the brain, it is possible to keep alive certain senses. They are able to hear and move their limbs, but have no visual or vocal response. That is why I needed you to finance my work. But they obey you, though. Yes. The capsule in the brain is designed to receive my thought pattern. They hypnotize. That what you mean? In a way, I suppose. It's well known you can induce a living person to behave contrary to his own will. Logical to assume you can do the same with the dead. And what are you going to do with these monsters? Nothing at all. My ends are purely scientific, you see. That is why I had to kill Khan Mahayali. A megalomaniac, he wanted to form an army of the dead, of living corpses. Can you imagine what it would be like? Their sense of pain is non-existent, no material needs. And as for sentiment, there is none. They obey without question. Now tell me why you killed the others. I assure you, it didn't give me any pleasure. But things were getting too complicated. I highly sensed that he would soon be dead. Only before I could kill him, he wrote a statement accusing me. Mary learned about it, so I ordered them to kill her and had her death made to look like suicide. Nadia died because she would have persuaded you to sell the house, and if that had happened, all my plans would have failed. You see, it isn't only the laboratory that interests me, but also the passages which run underneath the house to the cemetery, enabling me to get all the material I need for my experiments. I killed Ivan because he was blackmailing me with his illusions of grandeur and his threats to tell all, and the gravedigger, because he began to lose his sanity and started to talk. But in effect, it was my creatures who killed, not me. Don't waste your strength on that bar, Serge. It'll do you no good. This knife has your fingerprints on it. There'll be no doubt about your suicide. You mad doctor! You'll never get away with this! Listen to me. Before it's too late, your daughter, she's in danger. What about my daughter? She's in danger of being killed. What are you talking about? Stop this monster! Think about Doris, for God's sake. If I die, you'll never be able to help her. Igor, stop at once. I command you. No. Don't kill me. I'll do anything you ask. Don't kill me. Don't play the fool. You're going to open up that secret panel. If they haven't found Doris, she may well have gone back into the tunnel and may already be in the hands of your loathsome monsters. That might well be. And they no longer obey me.
Sarge is in. It's coming from down there. insists on taking her father's body away to the city for burial. Naturally. After everything that has happened, she wouldn't want to bury him here. Thank you for everything, Inspector. Not at all, miss. Do hurry, I'm afraid. There's no need to be afraid now. The inspector wants me to attend to a few formalities. I'll be along shortly. Take care. 